days. Father, we bless you today for who you are, for what you've done. We thank you for the move of your spirit. We touch you, and you touch us back. We thank you because you've gone all by yourself. We beseech you, Lord, to come into our midst tonight and take full control. Speak through us and let your will be done. That soul to be drawn unto you and be saved. We bless you and we give you all the praise. We thank you for the anointing that you're going to sing and for the glory that you fill this house. We give you praise now in Jesus' name. We pray, thank God. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing until we have read the word of God and may be seated at that time. Our scripture tonight comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 7, verse 18. Numbers chapter 7, verse 18, 9. And it reads, And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him, then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat that was upon the ark of testimony from between the two cherubims. And he spake unto him, Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I bless the Lord tonight for who he is and for what he has done. I thank God for being here tonight. Thank God for our jurisdictional prelate, Bishop Jamie R. Hackworth. I know that the house has been addressed, but please just allow me to thank God for my Bishop. Amen. Amen. And amen. And also to our jurisdictional supervisor, Mother Betty Ford. I praise God tonight for what God has done and for who God is to me. And thank God for those of you that are blessed to be here tonight. I'm going to go directly to the Word, and I'm not going to be before you long at all. Uh, I saw all these high-powered pastors and preachers coming in, and uh, my brother can get a little nervous. So you all need to pray for me. I want to use for a subject tonight, would you repeat it with me, chasing Chasing God. God. Again, chasing God. chasing God. In the Old Testament, you're going to pray for me. I, I may be uh, teaching and talking when I get through. I uh, find that uh, as I'm getting older, things are starting to happen to me that I wasn't prepared for. Uh, being an athlete for a number of years, has taken its toll. And I didn't realize it until I got a little bit older. Uh, so you all got to pray for me. So I may be talking like this, but we will give you the word of God. In the Old Testament, uh, worship is an attitude. It is an act of reverence to a deity. The term that's used in the Old Testament for worship is the word, I'll spell it to you, it's S-H-A-C-H-A-H, -H -A -H, which is pronounced Sankal. The root word means to depress or to lay prostrate in homage to, as we would a person who was royalty. Understand that you were never to be higher than the person who was in royalty. All right. He had to be or she had to be head and shoulders above everybody else. So the proper position would be to kneel, to bow, or to lay prostrate in their presence. The concept of worship is expressed by the term serve. Now, serve is not a word that a lot of us 
like to use because not many of us know how to do it. You have to know how to serve. Serving is not easy. Uh, I heard a couple of servants, that's all I heard. Because serving is not an easy process. Serving is something that requires you to go out of your way and never be seen. Because servants are not there to be promoted. Servants are there to serve. If you'll let me, uh, I know maybe it's a little early to do uh, the press pause, but I always think of uh, the situation uh, when I talk about, I think about serving uh, of the servant who, uh, in relation to Jesus Christ, the servant who, uh, in the day of the Christ, there was a process by which servants stood to the side and watched. Servants were not always at the table, placing things on the table. After the table was set, the servant would stand to the side and to the back where they could not be seen or heard, and they would just watch what was going on. And many times, the master or the guests would get up and leave the table. When they got up, they would neatly fold their napkin if they were coming back. Because they understood that, and the servant understood this because he was watching very carefully and seeing what was being done. So when he was watching, he saw them and he noticed that uh, the person getting up folded their, uh, their napkin and left it. That was a sign that he was coming back. All right. When he finished his meal, he would simply ball it up and throw it on the table. Yeah. And then the servant knew that it was time to go and clean up that area. The reason I think about it because I think I'm the most ultimate servant, Jesus Christ, who when he got up from the grave took the time to fold his death napkin and step out of the grave I'm coming back. But let me let me go on. The concept of worship has to do with serving. Uh, generally, and, and, and some of us, some of let me already, I'm telling y'all stuff y'all already know. Generally, what happens when you 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 you, you, you talk about worship is Worship of God, and I know you all know this, was modeled after the pagan. It was modeled after the pagan. And many of the things that they did, uh, because there were people who uh, served sovereigns or served uh, idols, and these persons were called uh, uh, priests or servants, and they would, uh, because these deities, uh, mostly statues would be either in uh, a temple or in the palace. There had to be somebody assigned to them to bring food to them. Now, if if you ever go into a store, and I'm sure many of you, because we have some people who, who, who are Buddhist, if you go into a, a store where the, the people are Buddhist, you go and you see that little Buddha sitting there cross legs and you'll see, uh, you'll see incense going up and you'll see apples and all oranges. Y'all got us out there, right? you see apples and oranges around them because somebody had to be assigned to uh, feed the, the, the deity. They were responsible for offering sacrifices, which was food sometimes. Uh, they were responsible for washing the deity. They were responsible for anointing the deity. They were responsible for clothing him. They were responsible for scenting the air. All of these things were done, and they're being done uh, later years in the temple. But it started with pagan. At night, they would light the lamp because they felt like the deity might need to see. They would provide God 
for the house because they understood that nobody should go in and bother their deity.